Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Bernie with CG Spectrum. Happy Monday. I need another day off. <laughs> How do you guys feel? Are you guys happy it's Monday? Who loves Mondays? <laughs> uh, today is one of those days where I woke up and I was like, oh man, I can't, it's so hard to get out of bed, but you know, sometimes you just got to wake yourself up and think about the good things, what you're excited about. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> All right. Hey, what's up, Glitter? You hate Monday? <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to say the same thing, just so I stay as positive as possible. <laughs> so I don't feed into uh, negativity, my negativity. <laughs> Glitter, you're being real. Uh, Glitter says nothing good about Monday. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to be real, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to be uh, positive for today. <laughs> Anyways, um, all right, today we're going to continue on with uh, this chicken dragon hybrid concept. Uh, we're calling him uh, or her Dragon's Breath. That's the name of one of my chickens. Uh, it's a Rhode Island red variety. Uh, anyways, yeah, let's keep going with this. Uh, when I took a look at this uh, before the stream, I realized that I'm losing a lot of the uh, the overall form in the head. I mean, I know I'm not done. I'm gonna add some, like right now, this isn't really adding, um, it's just default, like general lighting for volume. But yeah, I'm realizing I gotta pop a lot of this stuff out to get the overall like form volume uh, light hitting that area right here. So. Let me just try it real quick so I could get a better idea of what it's gonna look like. <clears throat> Colors aren't really gonna look right, but at least the lighting will. I'm using a overlay right now. Just trying to pop out the major forms. So that does help. Just too bright is what it is. I'm probably going to have to darken the edges later. But yeah, I'll handle all that later. Just keep that up here. <laughs> Anyways, how y'all doing? Uh, what's up, Blake? Hey, what's up, Margaret? Haven't seen you around, Blake. Hey, what's up, uh, Kushal? Greetings. Uh, Blake says, uh, just working on an environmental concept. Cool. Is it with, uh, CG Spectrum? Or is it your own stuff? Is it one of the assignments?
I'm going to try to indicate more here. Instead of trying to render a lot of this, I'm going to indicate, see if I could uh, get away with it. And that's something also good for you all to see. Um, like, you know, when you look at some concept art that looks completely finished, when you zoom in on it, a lot of parts look very, very loose. There's a lot of detail in terms of like, you know, uh, like different colors and values, but in terms of polish and rendering, right? The quality of render is very, very loose. You know, you guys know what I mean? Uh, that's something that uh, you guys should all be practicing or experimenting with as well because trying to polish something where the render is very clean it takes a long time it takes man like i would say it takes like if it if it takes me seven or sorry two weeks to finish a concept half of that time i'll be rendering you, you know what i mean so it takes a long time to render something uh so it's a good idea to figure out ways where you could give the illusion of rendering without actually rendering it, if that makes sense. So that you can be more efficient with your time and focus more on the design uh, rather than uh, focusing on polishing something. But not saying polish isn't important. I'm saying that you're trying to find efficient ways of making it look polished. Does that make sense? So that's something every concept artist is trying to do is find faster ways of doing things because it's always time's always the issue. Uh, Blake says, I'm an alumni from the concept art course. Cool. Uh, who did you have, by the way, Blake? Which uh, mentor did you have? Uh, Margaret says, so many things to do, so little time. Yep. <laughs> I wish I could stop time. Uh, Blake says uh, he's doing personal work. Hey, what's up, Brett? Brett Sullivan. I don't know if I've seen you here before. Maybe I did. I don't remember. What's going on, Brett? What are you up to? Uh, what do you do? Uh, Forever Zero Dragon. I haven't seen you around e either. There's a lot of new people here today. Uh... And Blake says, only paint what absolutely needs to be there, basically. Yeah, you understand, right, Blake? When you um, when you do a co environmental concept art, it's especially more important, right? Uh, to get, like, the overall look uh, looking right. You're not trying to render everything. You're A lot of it, it's indication. So it's especially important with uh, environment concept art. Like, you're using different textured brushes and things like that to uh, indicate you know, different materials, different uh, textures in the environment. But you can do the similar thing with uh, characters or creature concept arts as well. Uh, Blake also says this is where your creative problem solving comes in when doing concept art. Oh, Blake had Brandon. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Romy the homie. Wow, a lot of new people today. Romy the homie. <laughs> I like your name. Uh, what's up? Uh, says current concept art student, first time in the YouTube stream. Cool, cool. Who do you have, Romy the homie? Who's your mentor? Uh, Brett says, it's been a while since I've been on. I'm in term three of the concept art diploma with Brian. I'm working on my homework for tonight. Cool, cool. Yeah, I'm friends with uh, Brian. I've worked with him for, man, 
I don't even know how long, over a decade at least, maybe almost, dang, has it been maybe 14 years or something? I don't know. I worked with them at like three different game companies. Not working with them right now, but yeah, worked with them for about 14 years, man. Crazy. I'm noticing that some of these shapes in the silhouette are not looking right, but I'm just going to keep going with it because I'm going to fix it later when I, uh, like, I'm going to fix it all later. I see, like, things I want to, like, lengthen here. Like, I want to grab this whole thing and lengthen it. I want to fix that part. There's a lot of parts I want to fix, so I'm just going to keep rendering it to get it to a certain point and then fix it up. I'm probably going to change the color of the scales on his chest, on her chest. I keep saying his chest, but it's a hen. So I should call it a she or her. I'm probably going to make it similar color to her beak. Maybe not as bright, but just for fun, change it up. Hey, what's up, Carl? Haven't seen you in a long time. What's going on, Carl? Yeah, I got, I mean, I got your email recently. Actually, I think I talked about you last, the last stream. <laughs> Anyways, good to see you on here. Uh, Romy the homie says, uh, Hamza is my mentor. Also, I appreciate the love on the streaming name. <laughs> my, uh, my name used to be, um, not on a stream, but, uh, what was it on? I don't even remember a long time ago. It used to be on, I think it was ICQ. No, not ICQ. Sorry. I guess it was AOL or one of those things. Do you guys even know AOL? Maybe I'm, you guys are too young to know AOL. But uh, it used to be Bernie Jeremy. <laughs> so my name used to rhyme as well. That's why I got a kind of kick out of your name. It reminded me of mine too. Bernie Jeremy. <laughs> I think someone gave that name to me actually. Uh, a friend of mine like recommended I use that so I, I for some reason I just went with it it's kind of a silly name I'm a little embarrassed about it right now <laughs> I don't know why I think I'm too old that's why like Bernie Jeremy that sounds funny <clears throat> Glitter says maybe make scales part a little shinier to help them stand out. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to um, add more highlights on it later on. So that's a good idea. Yeah, to make it look different from the, uh, the feathery part. Yep. Yeah. 
but then again the feathers might be a little shiny too because i might i'm not sure yet if i'm going to try to make them look more scaly or not but yeah we'll see uh well that's a hard name i'm not <laughs> what is that Sh shikker shikker saxena wow these are tough names uh, anyways hey what's going on how much her the question is how much time an illustrator gets to create a splash screen of a game i have no idea if you're talking about stuff like at riot games like league of legends splash art from what i know and what from what i've heard is that they get quite a bit of time on it could be wrong but i knew i know someone who works there or a couple people actually and they tell me that they get a lot of time to work on things so i have no idea i would i would my guess would be uh a month i don't know but of course it's not just what you see they're doing many different iterations right uh, starting with thumbnails you know color uh, variations uh, lighting variations all of that stuff it's not as simple as you think it is and it has to go through different levels of approval so it takes time but yeah i'm just guessing not sure how long it takes uh glitter says i remember aol yep that was a long time ago before that it was icq i would be surprised if you guys know that that was like the first one of the first uh, instant messaging uh, programs that we had. Carl says, uh, I'm good. It's been a while and appreciate the reply. I've been watching back your previous streams. Love watching your process. Cool, cool. cool. I'm glad it helps. Um, <laughs> just don't watch the uh, the uh, ortho orthographic view stuff because um, I'm just whining and complaining the whole time. <laughs> uh, but yeah good to good to hear from you carl uh hope you're doing well uh carl was one of my students uh a while back ago i think it's been like man i don't even know has it been a year maybe with this whole COVID thing going on like time doesn't make any sense to me anymore like it's all throwing me off Whoops, sorry about that. Oh. Uh, Romy says, uh, that's funny. Younger people always trip out when I tell them about AOL IMs. Man, AOL used to be crazy. I'm not gonna go into any details, but yeah, there's some crazy stuff going on with AOL. I'm sure, like, there's crazy things going on online nowadays, too. But, um, I mean, I, I'm just probably not familiar with it because I don't have the time to look into that stuff. But when I was in college, I was using AOL, and there's, like, crazy stuff going on. But at the time, it was funny. It was so funny. <laughs> like, I'm talking about, like, the chat forums and all that stuff. Anyways. Hey, Ferran, what's going on? I think it's uh first time I'm seeing you on here too, Ferran. Why are there so many new people today? What's going on? Hey Renee, good to see you on again. Glitter says they get five minutes to make splash art. <laughs> That's what they want you to think, but it, it takes a lot more time. Uh Romy says, okay, now you got me stumped. Uh, <laughs> Shikur says, thanks, Bernie. Glad glad that, to see these streams. Uh, yeah, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name or th that name wrong. Uh, Brianna. Hi, Brianna. Brianna says, yeah, I think out of all the streams, yours is the best. Oh man, that means all the other streams are horrible if mine's the best. 
what are you guys doing all the other instructors if this if this is the best we got we're in trouble <laughs> uh, i'm just joking like half joking but yeah thanks brianna for saying that uh it could be a lot better but um yeah i'm just doing what i can uh Carl says, uh, I'll save that episode for when I'm whining about what I'm working on then. He's talking about the, uh, the orthographic views. Yeah, if you want to relate to someone that's doing working on something they hate, then watch that. You could whine with me. Yeah. Uh, Carl also says, it's been a year, over a year already, uh, has shifted my perception of time. Yep. Me too, man. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if this is real life or if I'm going to wake up one day and it was all a, a dream. <laughs> Crazy things are going on in the world besides even, you know, the COVID thing. Af you, you guys all heard about what's going on in Afghanistan, right? We're not going to talk about it because maybe people have different opinions about it and that's fine, but... It's just crazy, man, what's going on. Yeah. I, I feel for the people in uh, Afghanistan. It's not good. Oh, man. Uh, what's up, Ryan? Again, I think this is my first time seeing you on here. Ryan says it'd be cool if Spectrum share students' experience in a live video like this or ask them to do a project with their master in a live video. I agree with you. Uh, that's something I'll bring up. I, I actually wanted to, um, an idea I had was to, uh, yeah, like pick some students to, um, or pick some students' artwork that they're currently working on, work in progress stuff to give feedback on lot on a live stream right uh and then to even see their progression like the next live stream you see what uh changes that the student made uh off the feedback of the instructor and you know see how it changes right seeing that whole process i think would be cool uh the reason why i'm not doing that kind of stuff right now is because we're currently trying to create concept art for the 3d art team or sorry the 3d uh, department so yeah, we're not doing any of that kind of stuff yet, but I'll bring that up. I think that's a good idea. <clears throat> um, hey, what's up, Lily? First time seeing you here too. Man, so many new people, what's going on? I'm confused. I've never seen this many new people in one stream. Yep, Romy. Romy the homie. There are crazy things, wild things happening in the world. I can't believe we still, we live on the same planet as everybody else. It's just too weird. But that might be getting too deep. I don't want to, I was about to get choked up earlier thinking about it. I get choked up quite easily. I'm sensitive. <laughs> so I try, I'm sensitive, so I try not to be sensitive. You know what I mean? I know that I'm sensitive, so I try not to let, get, get that part or get into that mode, you know? It's just too much. Oh man, but it's, it's, you know, we don't want to ignore what's going on in the world either. I mean, that wouldn't be good either to ignore whatever's going on. Cause we all, we're all in the same boat, whether we know it or not. Actually, recently I've been watching a, a documentary on World War II with my kids. Some people might think that's kind of weird, but because it's pretty, like, you know, dark, I guess. But, um, yeah, my kids wanted to watch it, so I've been watching it with them while we eat. Um, 
but yeah looking at all that stuff man it's so like depressing like how crazy people are like how crazy leadership is and how crazy uh people who just follow what they're told to do right um out of ignorance or out of fear you know what i mean it's crazy and i hope people don't make the same mistake you know as a society as a country i hope we don't repeat the same things we we do in the past you know what i mean but <laughs> i don't know i'm not sure I feel like we're repeating a lot of it. Oh boy. Let's not get into that. Sorry. Let's just focus on this chicken. Oh, another thing. You guys saw um, Tesla reveal their future robot. You know what I'm talking about? I forget what they called it. Tesla bot? That thing is crazy too. When I saw that, I'm like, dude, is this real? This is freaking completely crazy. We're we getting robots now? It's freaking crazy. Life, like we live in a freaking movie. You know what I mean? Everything's changing too fast now. I mean, that's what people said was going to happen, right? That because of technology, computers, whatever, things were just going to advance so much quick, quicker than it used to. And we all expected that, I guess. But when you see it actually happening, it's just like, it's just crazy to me. I don't know how you guys feel. Maybe the younger generation doesn't feel the same, like, amazement as I do, but... When I see that stuff happening, I'm like, what the freak? What is going on? Is this real? It seems too early. I'm not ready for a robot slave. <laughs> I thought, I was like, I thought, uh, what's his name? Elon was the one that said that robots were going to take over. AI was going to take over. And now he's making them? I guess his thinking is he wants to make it first and make it successful so he can control, you know, be more responsible with how he's making these robots. But I don't know. But yeah, that stuff is crazy too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Lily says, I'm usually in Eric's stream. Cool, cool. Uh, Romy says, dude, going from the early 90s to now, and the older you get, the more it happens. Like I said, I'm almost 30 now, and it feels, or it hits me hard sometimes. And the feels hit me hard sometimes. Yeah, I was listening to some 80s music over the weekend. I forget how it came up. But I was just listening to some 80s music. Uh, I was born in 1979, so yeah, I grew up on uh, 80s music. 
and my sister was really into it or she still is but <laughs> anyways um yeah it was pretty weird to listen to 80s music um, i actually kind of like i was reminding or i was reminded of how much i like it it just feels so different uh, it's such a different time you know Uh, more unique, right? That's how I felt. Like the um, each artist had their own unique like uh, angle. It, it just seemed like the music was coming from a more genuine place, if that makes sense. So you get more unique like beats and lyrics and all that. Uh, Romy says Will Smith posted on his Twitter about that. It's the shot of him from iRobot. Ryan says I don't get Elon Musk. He likes AI or not. Yeah, I think he's trying to control it. That's um, I mean, I don't know anything, but that's what it sounds like. He's saying it, it's a danger. So if someone's going to do it, it might as well be him because he under he feels like he understands the danger of AI the most. So he wants to control control that. But, you know, if it goes in the wrong hands, what's going to happen? Which happens all the time, right? Things, technology gets into the wrong hands. And then you're done. <laughs> then it's Terminator. We got to fight the Terminators off. <laughs> we got to create some laser weapons before we start making robots. Or at least EMP weapons, or I guess they already have that, but personal EMP weapons. So we can shoot at the robots if they try to come at us. Uh, Shikshur says, what do you do to make yourself sit longer for digital art and not get distracted? Uh, definitely don't do streams if you're not trying to get distracted while you're doing artwork because this is extremely difficult, at least for me to do, uh, to do both talk and answer questions, read and try to draw and be creative at the same time. It's pretty much impossible for me to do. I'm just doing my best, uh, hard to focus. <laughs> so what do I do? Um, I turn on music, like, uh, kind of like what you're listening to right now. I can't hear what you're exactly listening to, but. The non-lyrical music is what I listen to, uh, music without words, so that, you know, I'm not, my brain is, again, this is how I think, my brain stays in the right brain mode, uh, where it's more creative, it doesn't fixate on lyrics or words, it's just flowing, right, uh, more on the visuals, uh, so that's what I do, what else, um, I get all my drinks ready. I got a bunch of drinks at my table so I don't have to get up, you know, if I'm thirsty. Uh, usually I work better at night when I used to really focus on doing artwork. Uh, I'm not anymore because I'm uh, an art director, but, uh, but when I used to have to produce the art, then I would uh, work at night because no one's, everyone's asleep. I'm just, you know, working on my own. No one bothers me, so that's when I could really focus. Um, yeah. So those are the things that I do to help me focus. But music really helps me a lot. Yeah. And sometimes I'll create like little goals for myself. Like, for example, when I sit down to work on this, I could think to myself, okay, I'm just going to go through the whole thing at this render level, put down all the information down, and then I'll sit up and do something else. I'll take a break. I have to finish this. I'm not going to stop until I finish this. Those are the little goals that I'll make before I start working. And then I'll reward myself with some cookies. 
Oh, it's so bad. I reward myself with food all the time. Uh, it's horrible. And I'm gaining serious weight where I shouldn't be gaining weight. And the worst places. Uh, like, I I'm not even joking. Like, right now, it's like a serious problem. Uh, I gotta... I gotta make some changes. This is a inter time for intervention right now. All you guys have to help me. <laughs> no more talking about food during the streams. Uh, I gotta seriously make some changes in my life. I'm pretty serious actually, but anyways. Laughing at myself at the same time. I envy people who are younger and who could eat whatever they want. Because I used to be one of those people. I used to be able to eat whatever I wanted. It didn't matter what it was. I could eat any amount and I would never gain weight. Like around my midsection. I would just never gain weight. I would try to gain weight and I couldn't gain it. But now I have the opposite problem. <laughs> anyway, so be happy if you can't gain weight. Don't worry about it. Just while you, if you have trouble gaining weight, just eat whatever you want and enjoy it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, Margaret says, I feel like our tiny human brains can't handle all of this change. Yeah, that's why we're going to lose to the AI. <laughs> Uh, Brianna says, uh, Be Bezos, I think you're saying Bezos is suing Tesla too. Yeah, I'm sure he, he hates T Tesla. I don't know the details behind that, but yeah, that guy already looks like an alien. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being mean. I'm just having fun. Uh, Farron says, was more difficult to create as well. Uh, sorry, not sure if I'm getting that. Oh, now it's super easy to create music. Maybe I missed something. Yeah, music too, right? Music's become much more easier for p individuals to create on their computers. That's awesome, I think. Anything that gives people more freedom, I think that's awesome. Uh... Ryan says, uh, Brianna, that dude will sue me someday. I'm sure he will sue every person on the planet. Uh, he, you're talking about Bezos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who, I just know he's filthy. Those are the top two richest people in the world, right? Tesla and, uh, I mean, sorry, I said Tesla. Elon Musk and Bezos, Jeff Bezos. Those are the two richest people in the world. Most, so I guess they're the most powerful people in the world in some ways, right? They have the most influence on us. We talk crap about some of them sometimes, but hey, we're buying from them every day. I'm buying Amazon stuff all the time. <laughs> uh, we need, Romy says we need EMP weapons. Yes. Yeah, I'm not trying to save an iRobot Terminator situation. Brianna says, uh, it's over a SpaceX contract, maybe. Hey, Joseph. It's the first time I'm seeing you here too, Joseph. What's going on? New people everywhere. Good to see you here. Margaret says, uh, we'll petition to change this into a Bernie workout stream. <laughs> Oh boy, you don't want to see that, it's going to be horrible. My wife has one of those things, um, man this sounds weird too, she has one of those uh, under the desk uh, bike thingies, you know where you pedal under the desk, it's kind of sad but that's what, what we're doing, <laughs> she says it works. But I guess, uh, you know, when you're old and you don't have time, that's what you're trying to do is just make make it so you can be the most efficient with everything. 
if you if you don't have kids, don't you have no right to say anything. Once you have kids, it's game over. You'll understand once you have kids. It's different. Things, everything changes. I used to work out like I used to work out almost every day for like two hours a day. So I wasn't lazy or anything. But it's not the same anymore. I gotta sacrifice time with my family if I work out now. <laughs> but yeah, it's all you gotta be creative and figure out ways to work it out. Like I'm trying to think of like things we can all do as a family together to be active, all that kind of stuff. We're always trying that kind of stuff. It's not easy though. When you go out with your kids, sometimes it's such a pain in the butt because it's it's such a hassle. Like you gotta get all their bikes, you gotta get all their stuff, make sure they're all ready to go. You know, it's like more work sometimes. So respect to all your parents out there that raised you guys is not easy. Even if they didn't do a perfect job, they just did their best, you know, for the most part. <laughs> they did their best. So tell, tell, tell your parents thanks for raising you. Because it wasn't easy, I'm sure. Especially an artist. Can you imagine that? Art, artistic kids, it's not easy. My kids are sensitive too. They're not, they're not easy. Sensitive just like their daddy. All right, uh, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing here because I was just rambling the whole time. Um, sometimes I do not know what I'm doing, to be honest, like when I'm drawing this kind of stuff, meaning I'm just kind of going through the motions. Uh, and sometimes that's fine. Like, it's, it sounds weird, but it's better than being like uh, stuck or um, feeling like you're paralyzed like oh I don't know what to do so I'm not gonna do anything right or I don't know what to do so like I'm just gonna go watch this TV show right um, it's better to just just do it like look look Nike should sponsor me uh, <laughs> it's better to just do things sometimes just force yourself to do it even if you don't know exactly what you're doing just do it and figure you'll figure it out so even what I'm doing here, I wasn't really thinking. I'm just indicating like the texture of the feathers and I don't know like if I'm gonna make it like hard or softer or whatever, or if it's gonna be regular feathers, a mixture of feathers and scales. I have no idea what I'm gonna make this into, um, but I'm just going with it. And I know I could always adjust it. So I'm just throwing information down at this point, right? And I might even hate it later, but it's okay. Just got to move forward sometimes. And as a professional, you learn that. You learn to not get hung up on things. You learn to just figure things out as you go. You learn to make things work, even if it's horrible. <laughs> Because you have to. You have to because there's deadlines. And you learn to be okay with not loving whatever you're working on sometimes. Because you, you're not going to love everything you do. And it's okay.
<clears throat> uh, Margaret says, I never knew there was an under the table bike pedal thing. I need one. <laughs> oh, you're starting too early then, Margaret. It's for old people. Uh, Brianna says mountain hikes. Yeah, that, that I like doing. Uh, I haven't... Yeah, we used to go a lot, but not recently too much. But yeah, that's a good one. I like hiking. Everyone in California likes hiking. People that I know that weren't from California, they made fun of us, like or Californians. They're like, all you guys do, there's like nothing to do on the weekends. You guys just go hiking. <laughs> But yeah, that's what people here do. But there's a lot of trails around here, like where I live. Because we're right by the mountains. Hmm. Renee says, what counts as old? <laughs> I would say, uh, let's see, what counts as old? Probably 30, 35 and up. That's when you're starting to get really old. Like you, I say that because after 35, you'll start feeling like significant difference in your body you'll you'll notice like weird things happening to yourself yeah then you're like oh at first you're confused and you're in denial you're like what's going on and then you realize oh i'm getting old that's what's going on <laughs> i'm getting old what i thought age was just a number I'm getting old, how could that happen? I'm so immature still, how could I be getting old? Mentally, I'm still young. It's weird, it's so true. I hear, I used to hear old people like saying all this stuff to me. I, I talk about this stuff all the time on the stream. I know you guys get bored of it. I'm like that old person that keeps repeating things, right? <laughs> I'm that guy now. But uh yeah, like older people used to always say, "Hey, take care of your skin." I'm like, "I have perfect skin. What are you talking about? I have good genetics, you know?" And they're like, "No, I know, but you got to take care of it right now." And I just ignored what they said. I'm like, "You have bad genetics. I have good genetics. I have really nice skin." But then they were right. Like one day you wake up and you're like, what's wrong with my skin? It doesn't look the same. It feels weird. And then you realize, oh, they were right. It's just old age. Anyways, sorry I'm boring you guys with that talk, but it's just true. But when you're young, you don't think about it. And it's fine not to think about it. Don't think about that. Just have fun. Think you're invincible. It's fine. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> Alright, this guy's looking too much like a chicken. Just like a chicken. So I'm going to add some webbing in here. In the wings. All right, let's try adding some stuff. Let's make it more purpley. Yes, I'll change the hue up a little bit just to add some more color variation. 
that's what I will do sometimes. If you have any questions, please shoot. And uh, previously, the other people that were asking about the school, like uh, students' experiences and things like that, if you have any questions about the school, go ahead and ask. Now's the time to do it while I'm just noodling away. It could be questions about anything. Do people still feel like hesitant to ask questions on a stream even though it's not in person? Is that how people feel? I'm not sure how it's like or what it's like these days. Or if that's not a thing anymore because it's all online. I remember um, I used to feel nervous to ask questions in person. I would hesitate a little bit when I was younger. sure if looking right let's see Oh, Menace Man, what's going on? Haven't seen you on either. Uh, how fast is the, or Menace is asking, how fast is the workflow, workflow for the school? I asked because it's only nine months. Oh, good question. Yes, yeah, so it depends on the week. Um, so they have a, for each week, right? They have, a basic task, a basic assignment, where it, it just gives you the minimum amount of things you have to do for the week. 
and then they have an advanced version of that assi same assignment. So if you have more time to work on things, you can choose the more advanced option for your assignment for that week. Okay, but there's always like an easier one to do. And they do that because every uh, person or every student has, you know, a different amount of time to uh, commit to for the week for the school, right? Uh, some people work part time, some people work full time, uh, some people don't work. So it all depends on your situation. So yeah, I hope that answers your question, Menace. Uh, they give you two options. And if you have a ton of time, you could, um, you know, with, what I do with my students who have a lot of time, like they have 40 hours or more a week to, to devote to the class, I give them extra assignments, you know, or I direct their uh, energy into, you know, certain studies they can do, right? Um, so yeah, there's, there's never going to be a lack of work to do. Yeah. It's usually the opposite problem, right? So if you're extremely busy right now, like let's say you work a full-time job, um, you got to make sure you're fully, com like you really, really committed to uh, doing the work, uh, like your schoolwork at night or something like that, or else it could be difficult to finish the program. I've seen students who really struggled um, to stay in it, right? if they didn't have enough time to uh, give to the program. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I would wait till you're ready uh, because you're gonna get the most out of it if you have the time to commit to the, to the course, to the coursework. Uh, Brianna says, would I be able to do the concept art program while working full time? Is there a balance in the classes since it's all online? Oh yeah, so I think I already answered that, right, Brianna? Uh, I've seen people do it while they're working full time, but again, they they really needed to be committed to it. Uh, yeah, as long as you know you're going to be committed to doing the classwork, it's possible. Um, but again, you're not going to have as much time as someone who's not working or just working part time. So, just know that. And what happens is if you do a group class, what I've seen is in group classes, <laughs> there's stu you know, there's students coming from all different situations, right? Some are working full time, part time and not working at all, like I already said. So when you compare yourself, right, during the uh, classes, during the feedback time, and you see people who are spending 40 hours on something and you only got to spend like 10 hours, right, or 12 hours, you get discouraged. Right. And a lot of people drop out midway because they're like, wow, like they didn't realize, you know, how little time they would have to actually work on the assignments. And it's discouraging, of course, if you compare yourself to other people and you see them doing a ton of artwork while you're like struggling to barely do the assignment. Right. So it's something that you got to think about. Just be realistic. Uh, Margaret says, I was working uh, full time when I did the intro class. It was doable, but I would have liked more time to do the assignments and push them to a higher level. Yep, exactly what Margaret said. That's the situation. Uh, you, it's Again, it's doable. I've seen it many times, but, you know, I've seen people struggle as well. Uh, Jesta, what's up? Jesta, first time seeing you here too. Welcome. Ajesta says, do you find graphic tablets that do not have their own screen difficult to use? I have dabbled with digital, but it's unintuitive for me to use. So you're talking about just uh, tablets, right? Uh, not the Cintiqs, not the ones with the screens. I started with graphic tablets without the screen. Uh, and then I went moved on to Cintiqs. I like Cintiqs a lot better. It depends though. I know people who do environment concept artwork that prefer the tablet over a Cintiq. Um, so it depends on the person, but you're saying that digital feels unintuitive. So my thinking would be that a Cintiq would work better for you because you're actually drawing on the screen, right? 
So that's more intuitive, right? For people who are used to drawing on paper, right? So maybe try a Cintiq out, some type of Cintiq. Um, again, I feel like it's much better for me, but I'm more of a character creature designer. Menace Man says, no, I have a ton of time. Give me some of your time, Menace. I need it. I'll buy, I'll buy some of your time. <laughs> but that's good. That's a good situation to be in if you have a lot of time. So again, I mean, if that's the case, you won't have a problem. Just tell your instructor, hey, I mean, ideally you're proactive, right? Where you're looking, you know what you need, you need, right? In terms of a student, like, you know what you need to work on, right? Artistically. So you're going to go out there and find uh, the different tutorials, right? Things that you, you want to work on, things that you think you need to work on and propose that, bring that up to the instructor. So it's easier for the instructor, right? If you're asking the instructor, hey, look, create a program for me right that's not going to be cool with the mentor in general because they're already so busy they're not there to create a new curriculum for you right they're there to guide you on the current curriculum that cg spectrum provides uh, but at the same time um, yeah if you tell the mentor hey look i want to do characters for example uh, i want to work on my figure drawings here are three like figure drawing tutorials or methods that I found online or the, through these books. What do you think? Can you look these over and tell me what you think? That makes it much more easier for the mentor to direct you and give you feedback, right? So be proactive and then um, present those ideas to your mentor and the mentor can guide you uh, depending on where you're currently at, like skill level wise and what your interests are. Um, so yeah, I mean, having a lot of time is not a problem. You could fill up that time easily. Just do, uh, you know, 300 figure drawings a, a week. <laughs> then you won't have too much time anymore. And I'm not joking when I say that. Do 300 figure drawings a week. No joke. If you want to get better, do that. Uh, Brianna says, uh, yeah, Margaret, okay, I work in accounting, so sometimes my hours range from 40-hour weeks to 55-hour weeks. Whoa! Yeah. That's tough when your hours are not, um, set, right? And I could relate to that with my job right now, my main job. Uh, my game job, it's not a set thing, so it changes every week. Uh, so then it's difficult to plan, right? When you're trying to do things on the side, it's very difficult to plan. Um, so yeah, that's tough. Uh, Brianna says, I'm a night owl anyway. Yeah, if you don't need sleep, then I guess you can do it. <laughs> Uh, Menace says, I'm looking at taking foundations of VFX diploma. What type of diploma or is it a certificate? You know, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, you got to talk to uh, probably Amanda. Uh, reach out on the website to the through the proper channels. Um, there's, I'm sure there's a link there that will send you to the right person. Um, but yeah, that person might be Amanda. So she could answer those questions for you. Yeah. Hey, uh, if you guys like streams like this, please give me a like. I'd appreciate it. I will be right back. Let me take a short break, okay? I'll be right back.
All right, thanks for waiting. More questions, please. Any questions, anything, anything. Throw me off. Make it so I don't want to answer the question. I gotta fix this part, it's not looking right. I use the warp tool all the time, but it messes up all my layers. <laughs> and I just keep going. Don't do it, don't do that, don't do what I do. I'm just gonna cut all this out anyways later, so it doesn't matter. I'm going to try sinking all this in and see what it looks like. As you all know, there's always so many different ways of approaching something visually. Um, that's why it's important to um, feel free to mock things up when you don't, you're not sure or you're, you don't like something the way it's turning out. Never be afraid to just paint over everything and do a mock-up of what it could look like real quick before you continue on. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just doing a quick mock-up to see if I can make this look better. If I don't feel like it looks better, then I'll just continue on with what I have. Because I could angle this top part out towards the viewer and push this knock this all back because right now it looks very flat which is fine too it just depends it's a concept um, but yeah it, it was looking flat so I'm, I was trying to make some adjustments and I'm not sure yet still let's see All that subtlety I, I took time to add into that wing, the leathery part of the wing, is all gone now. I just painted over everything. And sometimes you gotta just be willing to do that. If it's not working, it's not working. You just gotta start over. Especially if you're a student and you don't have like serious deadlines, then you can, you should experiment. Now's the time to experiment. Now's the time to, you know, try things and mess up. Have it so it doesn't work out. Now's the time to do all that. Don't be afraid of messing up. If you know what I mean. Most people are afraid of messing up. And we all have to learn to get over that. Let's just go try going with this. I gotta keep moving forward. I'm being super slow right now. Uh, Blake is asking, how does one go about getting a job in the industry when all employers advertise that they only want people with three to five years of experience? Yeah, that's the trend that uh, that's happening right now, Blake, is um, 
from what I understand is that they're looking for more uh, senior people these days, senior artists, because they're outsourcing a lot of their uh, production art. Uh, so they want someone with more experience to guide the outsource, um, outsource contractors. Because it just makes more financial sense for them to do that, for the companies to do that. So that's what I know. Or from my understanding, that's what's going on these days. And that's why you see a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, listings for senior artists or lead artists or art directors, things like that. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible to, uh, get a job as a, as an entry level. There's still a lot of opportunities out there, but I do see that trend. So I know what you're talking about. Uh, Menace says, thanks for the stream and answering my questions. Cool, no problem, Menace. Uh, Blake says, it feels like hitting a brick wall when putting in applications. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it does feel that way. Uh, but keep going. That's just part of the process. I mean, it could mean a lot of things. It could just, I don't, without knowing the details, right? Like knowing what your portfolio looks like, I, I don't know what to say exactly, but sometimes it's just your portfolio, right? And a lot of the times um, when you read the, uh, the listing, like the uh, listing for a job, and you see the details of what they require, part of it you can just ignore. Those are just guidelines, you know what I mean? Most of the time they're general guidelines. So the actual numbers, like three to five years, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, as long as they can see through your portfolio or your resume uh, that you have potential or that you're around that range or similar at least. Like let's say you have one to three years experience. I don't know. Uh, it's all general guidelines, it doesn't mean much. Just still apply is what I'm saying. Ignore it and still apply. That's what I would do. Uh, Forever Zero Dragon says, are you painting with 100 opacity brush? Yes, I always do that. I just put on transfer here and put pen pressure on. It depends, everyone's different, but that's what I do. And I make sure on my uh, pen settings, let me bring it up. Oops. Yeah, I make sure that the tip feel is on more on the firm side. Because if, if I keep it on the softer side, then, you know, it's just too strong. Like, it's not sensitive enough, the tip feel. So I keep it on the firmer side. If you feel like um, you can have less control over the opacity, even with uh, pressure sensitivity on, Try uh, moving this over to the firm side and then see how you like it. You just have more control over it when you go firmer here. So try that out. Blake says, would it be better for me to be applying to art houses instead? Uh, try both. I always say the same thing, like if I were you in your situation as a student, I try everything. That's what I did as a student. I would try everything and anything. That, <laughs> that was my way of doing things. I would do everything that no one else would want to do. Every option, uh, leave no stone unturned. That's what I would do. Apply to pl companies that don't have listings. That's what I did. Um, try to talk to anyone you can it, related to the art field. Everything, do everything. Everything and anything you can think of. That's usually what sets apart people. Like most people just want to take the easy route. People want to do what's normal, what's acceptable. Uh, but yeah, be creative. You guys are creative. So be creative in how you look for jobs too. <laughs> how you connect with people. Do a stream. 
Make videos. Uh, use social media, right? Do all that stuff. But honestly, most importantly, you got to work on your art skills. Don't forget the obvious. That you're, if you're good, really, really good with art, the art, your portfolio will speak for itself, right? Your cover letter doesn't matter, and nothing matters when you, all you have to do is show your portfolio. And if you're a decent person where you're not crazy and rude and you can work with other people, then you're going to get a job, you know, no matter what, you will get a job. But sure, use social media, do everything and anything that no one else wants to do. And that will give you an extra edge, right? Sorry, I went on a rant. Uh, Romy says, I was wondering, do you have an extra large drawing pad if you don't mind sharing? I've been using this XP pen entry level pad, which is getting me along fine. Extra large drawing pad? No, I don't. I just use a uh, Cintiq. I actually have three Cintiqs here. Um, two of them are, the current one I'm working on is the 22 HD. I think the other one is a 21. I don't use anymore. Uh, there was something wrong with it actually. It would overheat once in a while. And then I have a new Cintiq, a 24 inch Cintiq that my company sent me. But guess what? I'm so lazy, it's still in the box. I, I didn't even take it out of the box. Cause, well, I'm lazy and busy. That's my excuse. I'm busy too. Isn't that silly? I have a 24 inch Cintiq in the box. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know. Every time I'm a little scared to like switch things up because every time you change things, like something goes wrong and I don't want to do, I don't need, I don't have the time to deal with that stress right now. Um, but yeah, if I have a small tablet, like I have to, a super small tablet somewhere that I just have just in case, you know, a Cintiq, you know, doesn't work anymore or I have to travel. Uh, all that stuff is fine. Yeah, it depends on the person. I mean, I wish I could just be comfortable drawing on a small tablet so I have more desk space, you know, and then, again, that I could travel and, you know, do that kind of stuff from wherever, but I'm spoiled with the Cintiq, so it's hard to go back for myself. Uh, Romy says, I looked at this fancy 22 inch 2K drawing pad that was around the 800 price range. Do people really use those? Sure. Why not? Yeah, 22 inch is a good size. You don't need anything bigger than that, to be honest. I mean, I had a 27 inch Cintiq at one point for my last job. I, I returned that one, but... um. Honestly, it was too big. Like for me, I thought it was just way too big. It was unnecessary. Uh, Forever Zero says, oh, I see. Nice tip for the tip. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Uh, Blake says, thanks for the advice. Uh, he says, I use a XP Pen 22R Pro and it works great for my current needs. Cool. Thanks for the feedback, Blake. Lily says, could you give me some advice on the portfolio? Uh, yeah, what, what kind of advice do you want, Lily? Romy, no problem. Yep, what's going on? I'm starting to lose a, a bit of motivation for this image. And I know you guys know what that feels like, right? And what I do when that happens is sometimes I'll just force myself to push through, but practically what you can, what I do is I will go back to an area that I like or that is more fleshed out and I'll render it more. 
or bring it to where I want it to eventually be closer to where I want it to be so that I feel like, you know, all right, that's what it's going to look cool. Let's keep going, you know, get that motivation back. So I might do that soon because I'm not feeling motivated to continue with this. To be honest, just being honest, but I could get it back. I'd rather just answer your guys' questions. <laughs> Let's see. See if I could bring this back. Yeah, in my opinion, all this art stuff, it just takes a lot of concentration to do it right. So, you know, even for you guys, make sure when you're working on stuff during the week, you really get rid of as many distractions as you can. Even if it's like, you know, to, like I know what it's like to be watching a show while you're trying to work and you could convince yourself, oh, I could do it. It's no problem, right? You want to believe you could do both, right? But it's not true. I mean, you could probably complete your work, right? Yes, you can do that. But is it going to be as good as if you were not watching the show and concentrating? Nope. I don't believe that's true at all. When you're fully concentrated on your work is when you get the best results by far, like it's significantly different. Let's be honest with ourselves, right? But sometimes I get it. Sometimes you really don't feel motivated. And then, you know, watching a show while you're trying to do something helps sometimes, right? Helps yourself start going at least, you know? I get that. But if you're have, finding that you're feeling a lack of motivation quite often, then you got to rethink if you really want to do this art thing. Because you should feel extreme motivation normally. You got to be motivated to succeed with this kind of stuff. I'm just being honest with you guys, right? If you're already struggling with motivation, Oh, you're gonna you're 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 gonna have a lot of trouble coming up just being honest because there's gonna be times when you really 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 don't want to do this stuff what are you gonna do then oops I screwed up yep I hope, yeah, you guys really have a lot of a strong desire to do this kind of stuff because that's what you're going to need to like push through this for years to come, right? Or I, again, everyone's at a different place, but you have to be prepared to spend years on this stuff until you get a job. I mean, we go to, I went to art school for four years to be ready to get a job, you know? And I worked my butt off. I worked as hard as I could. And I could honestly say that. And I, you know, and it was it still wasn't easy. It's not like I was getting offers left and right. <laughs> Let's 
I know it's a different time now, but you know, still, it's never easy to do this kind of stuff. Everyone wants to do art. Oh man, that's looking horrible. But I'm just gonna keep going. It's not easy to do art while you're rambling. Yeah, let's go back to the head. Let me play with the head a little bit here and make it better. Um, darken the edges a bit. <clears throat> let's answer some questions. Lily says, oh, like what should be included in what is good and bad? Stuff like that. Uh, Lily, you gotta tell me, um, you know, like what you're into, like what does your portfolio look like? Are you into characters? Are you, I don't even know if you're a concept artist. Like do you wanna do concept art, illustration? Um, yeah, what do you wanna do first? The more specific you are, the better. Like the, you know, the more proper advice I could give you, more accurate advice. Oh, it looks like a dinosaur. I don't know why the head was all jacked up like that. <laughs> oh no, I guess it's the... What do you call this? I forget what you call that. The thing hanging off of his, uh, her, uh, neck. It's not a gizzard. What is that? Forgot what I called it. I know this is a comb. What was this? Tattle? Toddle? I don't remember. Uh, that looks too small now, too. That's weird. Yeah, as you work on things, things start looking different as you continue to work on it because you're comparing it with other stuff you're rendering. So you have to be willing to make a lot of adjustments like what I'm doing here. If it don't look right, make it right. says uh, I am on a 12 inch pad and I was thinking of getting 22 to 24 inch pad for a wider work surface yeah someone else give uh, Romy some advice on that whoever works on a pad because um, I think the last one I had that was large was maybe 12 inches uh, I, I thought the whole convenience of a pad was to get a smaller one so you don't have to do so many um, large strokes right and you have a um, it doesn't take up too much desk space. Um, I would think if it's a larger pad or it's too big, then it's almost like more work to like move your hand around the surface. Um, I don't know. So that's why maybe someone else could give uh, Romy some feedback on a larger uh, tablet. Hard dick, what's up? That sounded weird. I'm just gonna call you Rohit. <laughs> Rohit asks, can you show werewolf concept or artwork? What does that mean? What werewolf concept? Uh, sorry, not sure what you're asking. What's a werewolf concept? What are you talking about? Um, Blasphemer says, uh, my trick is to never feel motivated to begin with, so I never lose motivation. <laughs> 
that's an interesting trick. Um, <laughs> hey, Husky, what's going on? Uh, Husky says, I only watch shows or listen to podcasts during low brain power demand stages. Oh, yeah, podcasts are a good thing. I think you can listen to podcasts. Uh, I don't know if it's better than music for me personally, because, again, I try to stay in that... Uh, that right brain, right? Where I'm not like trying to process anything. Like I, I basically go like, <laughs> no, I can't say this here, but anyways, um, yeah, I just try to <clears throat> just be using a part of my brain for the creative side and just to focus on what I'm doing completely. Less distractions, the better I think, but I think podcasts are a good uh, alternative uh, instead of watching like a sh trying to watch a show at least you know that at least you're not you're just focused on one image right you're not looking up and down or anything like that uh romy says i usually have the office on for music <laughs> yeah romy says i found myself a little intimidated in terms of sharing my work and getting critiques yeah everyone starts off like that a bit you get used to it. Most people do get used to it. I had uh, I worked for, with uh, entry level artists who are you know they're professionals because they're entry level, but I've worked with some that had a hard time getting to critiques. Um, they would hide their work when I walked by, uh, and it's funny, but at the same time you can't do that if you're a pro. <laughs> uh, but yeah, get start getting used to it is my point. Start posting it online, posting it in the, um, if you're already part of CG Spectrum, post it, post it in the Slack channel, right? The proper uh, Slack channels, the digital DigiPaint channels, uh, so that you get used to getting feedback. You get used to showing artwork. Uh, you get thicker skin, right? You don't take any critique personally because they're not personal. Uh, if they are, whoever is giving you that feedback, silly, right? But just realize it's not personal. Uh, it's just trying to improve your artwork. That's all it is, right? And it's it's not all right either. The feedback, take it with a grain of salt, especially if it's coming from other peers. Um, usually what I do is if I'm trying to get feedback is I try to show it to multiple people and whatever feedback they give, I try to see the commonalities in the feedback, right? Similar critiques. So then I know, okay, that's probably right. Even if I disagree with it in my mind, or I had previously disagreed with that, if more than a couple people are saying it, there's a point to it, right? There's legitimate reasons for them saying it probably. So I need to take that feedback seriously. You know what I mean? So that's usually how I take feedback. Uh, I don't take what one person is saying too seriously. Uh, but if multiple people are saying the same thing, then I really take a hard look at what they're saying. And at least I try it, you know what I mean? Or if a mentor or someone who, you know, like I respect is saying it, then I will really uh, take a hard look at it. Uh, Romy says, I'm just starting my second term of the basic concept art program. I want to do 2D animation after the art course and work on anime short clips. Cool, cool. So you're just starting off. It's your, um, it's your second term. That's the time where you should go crazy because meaning like showing your artwork because you're just starting off. No one expects you to be awesome. You know what I mean? Uh, so just show everything. I know it's easier said than done, but I'm just telling you what other people are thinking. I think part of the reason why students have a difficult time showing the art, their artwork is because they're worried about what other people think. But like I said, most people do not expect you to be awesome, like at your level. So yeah, we're not looking at yourself and thinking what this guy sucks. You know, no, you're just starting off, you're learning. Uh, we think it's awesome actually. The mentors think it's great when you are showing your artwork 
and to get feedback to get improvement you know to improve your artwork because it shows that you're willing to learn that you have the right attitude you know what i mean And a lot of people, to be honest, don't have that. So that's something you want to develop as well as the right attitude, a mindset that wants to learn. I mean, even now for me, dude, I don't know everything. I clearly don't know everything. Um, if I acted like I knew everything, I'd be silly. Um, so what's the big deal? You know, I've been doing this for total, like I'm talking about art college and everything, over 25 years. And I still suck at a lot of things. So what's the big deal? Look at me, I'm drawing a ch dragon chicken and it looks weird. Uh, so what's the big deal? Oh yeah, I forgot I was trying to focus on the head. Look at me. Let's try that again. Hey, what's going on, Sander? Blasphemer says, show us the wolf art you're hiding from us, Bernie. What are you guys talking about? What wolf art? What are you talking about? Am I hiding something? <laughs> the wolf art? What are you talking about? Was I streaming last night? Well, I was like sleep streaming. I was in my sleep, but I was streaming. And I was painting a wolf or something. Is that what's going on? And I don't remember anymore. Uh, Romy says, I'm going to throw my most recent project in DigiPaint channel on Slack. Yeah, that's awesome. I really encourage you to start doing that. The sooner you do it, the, you'll realize, oh man, that wasn't a big deal. Why didn't I start sooner? And that's just a uh, growing process on its by itself, right? It, sometimes it has nothing to do with art. It's just you like getting over your fears, right? Uh, and just doing stuff, you know what I mean? And sometimes we all need a nudge, a little nudge to do those things. Uh, like the streaming stuff too, like I tell you guys, I, I probably wouldn't have done this unless the school encouraged me to try it out. So yeah, this made it a little, that nudge helped me to do this and it's, it's not a big deal, right? I know there's some of you guys out there that do streams on your own. Uh, that's awesome. I think all that stuff is great. Because it kind of gets you out of your comfort zone. And it gets you to... Uh, just connect with other people and uh, communicate things, right? And maybe hopefully teach or help other people in some way right i think all that stuff is great where you could connect with other people and 
hopefully help them or just connect with them on their journey like whatever they're doing go on the journey together in a, in a way right all that stuff is awesome Throw some highlights on here. Oh, actually, let me darken this up a bit. We need more volume here. All right, I darkened the edges there a bit. And now I'm going to light up the center part where the light's hitting it. Let's try overlay just to make things easier. See if it works. Uh, Romy was saying, yeah, I was streaming League of Legends and other games. I want to start streaming while I draw too. Yeah, try it out. I think even that could motivate you, right? I mean, we need people to uh, motivate others at, di at different levels, right? Um, yeah, so for sure. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, if I ever uh, stop streaming with CG Spectrum, I think I would do this on my own, my own stream. It would be a lot crazier. I wouldn't be bound. I wouldn't feel bound by the, <laughs> by the school's image. But yeah. 
yeah, for now, I need to uh, behave. Maybe that's a good thing. I want the light to come from the left a little bit. Do that. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, when you get to the more final touches or the highlights of uh, your imagery, I would really slow down. This is not the time where you want to go crazy, especially in your focal areas. You want to slow down and make sure it looks right. Make sure the lighting looks consistent. How you're lighting it right. I get so many spam phone calls, it's crazy. I'm like, I'm almost used to it in a sad way. So, so with your lighting, as well, you really want to be careful where you're placing your lighting. 
you don't want to go crazy and like paint over everything right and make everything too bright but you want to be selective about how you're throwing in your lighting to create like maximum volume you, I'm, at least for me I'm always thinking how do I show volume not just in the details but the overall form of whatever I'm painting right I want to go for maximum volume because if there's too much volume then I could always kind of kill that volume easily right but if there's not enough volume what am I going to do I have to bring it in bring it back somehow so it's better to go crazy with the volume in my opinion and then tone it down later if you need to kind of looks like a turkey now This should have been for uh, Thanksgiving. A special Thanksgiving stream. Turkey dragon. <laughs> Fighting off like little, there should be like little people, like little cavemen trying to like spear it down, you know? Surrounding it. Cool, thanks. Hey, time's almost up. Thanks for joining me on this stream. It was actually uh, fun today. I like uh, I like it when there's new people and people chatting and asking questions. That always makes it more fun, easier to uh, get through instead of me rambling on my own. <laughs> like a crazy old man that makes it more fun for me to interact with you all but yeah thanks again for joining had a good time hope you all have a great week and uh hope you guys all work hard on whatever you're working on all right you love my ramblings, you crazy. No, I'm just kidding. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. I will see you next Monday. Okay. See ya. Bye.